We are at the Equinox Fitness Club. Hello, thanks for joining us. I am Maria Soreo, and we are gonna take you through a beginning workout today. Now, we're gonna start off with Ruben. He's gonna do a warm up for us, and then JJ is gonna come in. We're gonna do a Pilates workout, and then Ruben and I will get back together after and talk about some cardio options for you. So again, for beginners, make sure you stay tuned, get a bottle of water, maybe a mat and a towel, and follow us as best you can. We'll be right back, don't go anywhere. Hi, my name is Ruben and I'm going to be taking you through a warm up before your Pilates exercise. Okay? We're going to be doing a light jog just to get the heart rate up and get the blood flowing. What you want to do is just start to jog lightly and depending on your ability, you don't want to jump too hard. Just go nice and light just to get the heart rate up and what that's going to do is it's going to help the blood flow, it's going to prevent injury and Facilitate your muscles to be able to do the exercise. Excellent. Good. It's like jog. You should already be able to feel your heart rate going up. Good. You can actually kick your knees up even higher. Excellent. Good. And we also have another option. If you want to do a little bit more intense warm up, you can go with a squat as well. It really depends on your ability, so you want to make sure that you don't have any problems with your back or your knees. And the way you want to test that is by going nice and slow, keeping your hands, you can either keep your hands right behind your head, keeping your elbows back will make sure that your back stays in the right position as you're squatting down. Excellent. You want to go nice and slow at first. Good. If you have any problems on the way down and you start to move forward, you feel like you have any stability issues, then you just can go with a half squat. But if you can go all the way down, Good. Make sure that your thighs go right down to parallel, parallel with the ground. You should really feel your heart rate going up now. Excellent. And you can go with about 15 or 20. Again, just monitor your ability. Very good. Watch your knees. If you're in front of a mirror, you can always check your posture. Just make sure you don't sacrifice doing more repetitions for form. That is the most important thing. Very good. And if you want to take it up another level, you can put your hands up to the sky, and that will add another element of instability. Again, watching the legs, watching the knees. Very good. Excellent. And if you want to warm up the shoulders, we'll also throw in some jumping jacks. You want to make sure that your body has circulation in all the joints that you're going to be utilizing today. Again, the most important thing is preventing injury and being able to facilitate the muscle movement. Good. So you can go with about 20 jumping jacks or count about 30 seconds. Heart rate should be ready. Good. Keep going. Excellent. You want to get some good wide movement? Good. Good. Go back to running in place. Just kind of shake it out. Joints should be working. Everything's working. Circulation, good. Back into the squats. And you should really feel these now. You should be able to move a lot more fluidly. Excellent. Good, we'll go with five more. Nice and low. Three, two, and we can even hold it down. Just a little bit of buildup of lactic acid there. Prepare the body, increase the core temperature. Very good, and rest. Okay, now you should be ready for your workout. JJ, take it away. Hi, I'm JJ Hendershot. I'm the group fitness manager here at Equinox Palace Verdes, and we have been asked to show you a short beginning routine that could maybe be used for any ability level. We've chosen a little 10 minute Pilates routine because that is something that almost anybody can do from a very young age to a very old age, regardless of any kind of um, limitations that you have. Generally speaking, Pilates is one of those things that anybody can do with the proper modifications. Um, one more thing to 
know about Pilates is that even if you are not a beginning worker outer, you probably will get lots from a Pilates workout because the more you know about the Pilates, the harder it gets. So we're going to start by stacking your spine and the way that we do that is that you're going to lay down on your mat or on a towel or whatever you have with you. You're going to bend your legs up so that your heels are a little bit closer to your hips than you feel comfortable with and you're going to take your fist and place it just between your knees because fist width distance apart is about hip width distance apart. In Pilates we always talk about the bones of your body and not the flesh of your body so we're talking about your hip bones. Once you've found that position you're going to start to think about all four corners of your feet, your big toe, your little toe, the inside and the outside of your heel. You're going to make sure that your knees are in line with your feet and that your feet are in line with your hips. You're going to flip your palms to face the ceiling and roll your shoulders into their back pockets. And I talk about shoulder blades and Pilates as being in three positions. The first position is that you're drawing your shoulder blades out of the ceiling. The second position is, is that you're pulling your shoulder blades out of your ears. And the third position is that you're making your collarbone as wide as you can. Once you've found those three positions of your shoulder blades, you're going to pretend that somebody's pulling you just slightly out of the crown of your head, making you just a little bit taller than you were before you laid down. And then we're going to start thinking about the bony part of the back of our body, the base and tip of your tailbone. Your tailbone is a triangular shaped bone at the bottom of your spine and the left and right side of your tailbone. You're going to try to get all four corners of that tailbone, even though it's a triangle, equally weighted on the mat underneath you and then we're going to start to breathe. You're going to inhale through your nose and exhale through your mouth. And as you exhale, you're going to try to knit your ribs together on top of you and push your ribs down underneath you. You're going to inhale through your nose. Without expanding your rib cage to the ceiling, you're going to try to expand your rib cage up to your head and down to your feet. And you're going to exhale through your mouth, closing your ribs deeper down into your body. And every time you inhale, you're going to try to think about your rib cage being like an accordion so that you're expanding up to your head and down to your feet rather than up to the ceiling and down to the floor. And as you exhale, you're going to try to nip those ribs together on top of you and push those ribs down onto the floor underneath you. We call this, you're going to keep breathing in and out, your active neutral. So in Pilates, this is where we begin. All of these pieces of our body are going to stay just exactly this percent on or active. And we're only going to increase the intensity of our workout from here. So the first thing we're going to do is called a pelvic curl. You're going to inhale through your nose, minding those ribs. And on the exhale, you're going to start to take your pubic bone up to your chin and roll up one vertebrae at a time. When you get up to the top, you're going to inhale. And then on the exhale, you're going to peel down one vertebrae at a time, keeping your pubic bone as high as you can, as long as you can, your hips as high as you can, as long as you can, come down through the base of your tailbone and then rock back through neutral. And then again, inhale. And then exhale, tuck up and under. The reason that we do pelvic curls is that we're trying to create just a little space between each one of our vertebrae, reoxygenating the back. Inhale at the top. And then on the exhale, peel down. And the idea is as we do these pelvic curls and reoxygenate the back, that we're kind of stretching in between each one of those vertebrae. One more of those, inhale, exhale, peel up, and we're preparing the back so it's just a little bit more flexible so that when we get into our ab work, it's just a bit easier. Inhale, and then on the exhale, peel down one vertebrae at a time. Once we get down to the bottom on this next one, you're going to mind all those pieces, but you're going to take your hands around behind your head and interlace your fingers. Elbows are going to go wide. You're going to take one leg up to tabletop and then take the other to match. So on Pilates, tabletop is exactly exactly a 90-90. I'm exactly 90 degree angle here. I'm exactly 90 degrees out of the hip. At that tabletop position, the elbows are going to go wide, wide, and then I'm going to have to think about that rib cage again. Is it still closed and knitted together? Are the shoulder blades still in their back pockets? Am I still extended through the crown of my head? And we're going to start some knee side to side. So now we're going to take the, the spine and we're going to kind of stretch it laterally. We're going to inhale onto one hip. It doesn't matter which way you go. You're just going to make sure that when you inhale onto that hip, you keep that 90 degree angle at the knee and the back elbow down on the ground and then you're going to exhale back through neutral. Inhale onto your other hip again. I'm going to keep now this elbow on the ground. Doesn't matter which way you go and then exhale back through neutral. Inhale onto one hip. This time think about that front leg, whichever way you're inhaling to and try to push that leg into the other leg to get the abdominals to work. 
inhale onto whatever other hip you're going to and use that leg to push into the other leg to come back through neutral. If you want a little bit more out of this exercise, you can inhale onto whatever hip you're going to and extend the legs and then exhale back through neutral with those legs straight up to the ceiling, but I'm still 90 degrees straight up to the ceiling at the quad or the femur, whatever makes sense to you. Inhale onto the other hip, keeping that other elbow down and then exhale back through neutral, bend those legs. Take one at a time back down onto the mat. Think about that exact position we were in before. I'm hip width distance at the feet and the knees. We're going to start our chest lifts now. We're going to inhale here. And then on the exhale, you're going to chest lift up. Hands are behind your head. Inhale at the top and then exhale down. I'm still trying to extend through the crown of my head. Make sure I'm not dropping my chin onto my chest. Inhale. On the exhale, chest lift up. This time, reach around, grab behind your legs and pull yourself just a little bit higher. Bend your elbows, use your biceps to pull you just a little bit more off that mat. And then activate the abdominals. Imagine someone's going to punch you in the belly. Activate and let go with your hands. See if you can stay just exactly that high in space. Hands are gonna go up towards the ceiling. Hands are gonna tuck behind your head, extend through the crown of your head, and then peel down slowly, one vertebrae at a time, just like we did on the pelvic curl, just going the other direction. Inhale at the bottom. Exhale, chest lift up. Same thing we just did. Reach around, grab behind your legs and pull. Just take yourself a little further than you could on your own. Use your biceps, roll your shoulders back, extend through the crown of your head. Activate those abdominals like someone's gonna come in for a punch or a tickle. Take those hands to the sides of those legs up to the ceiling, hands tucked behind your head, all your head weight in your hands, and then peel down slowly one vertebrae at a time. So now we're a little warmer in the abdominals, but we still need to work the crossover muscles, which are external and internal obliques. We like to corset the spine in Pilates, so hands go back behind your head. I'm going to cue right and left, so just take a moment. Where's my right leg? Where's my left leg? I know it sounds funny, but it helps. Take your right leg up to tabletop. Hands are back behind your head. Remember that tabletop is exactly 90-90. Inhale here. On the exhale, chest lift up. Both your hands are going to go to the outside of your right leg. You're going to pull up and then around that leg. So now I'm twisting, trying to take my left rib cage to my right hip bone. Take your left hand behind your head. Take your right hand behind your head. And just hold here, looking to the outside of that right leg. I'm now working left external to right internal oblique. Untwist and then peel down, inhale at the bottom. Exhale, chest lift up, both hands grab onto the outside of that right leg again. You're gonna pull up and then over on this side, shoulder blades in their back pockets, tip of my tailbone is down. Left hand comes behind my head, hold it there. Right hand comes behind my, hold, my head, hold it here. Extend that leg if you'd like, or you can keep it right here at tabletop. For those of you who are a little more advanced, extend your other leg and externally rotate it. This is like a crisscross, what a crisscross is untwist and then peel down. We're going to do the whole thing on the other side. I'll cue you through it really quick. Left leg comes to tabletop. Think where's my left leg? Inhale. On the exhale, chest lift up. Both hands grab onto the outside of that left leg. Pull up and then over. Remember we just went through this on the other side. Look into the outside of my left leg. Take your right hand behind your head. Take your left hand behind your head and hold. I'm thinking my right rib cage to my left hip bone. Untwist through neutral and then peel down. We'll take that one other one. Inhale. Exhale, chest lift up. Both your hands grab onto the outside of the left leg. Pull up and then over on that side. Right hand goes behind your head. Left hand goes behind your head. You can extend this left leg for just a little bit more. Or for those of you who are even more advanced, extend your right leg and externally rotate it. That means I take my heel in towards my midline. I take this whole leg and rotate it in the hip socket. I look to the outside of that left leg. Untwist or neutral and then peel down. Take your arms and legs and reach them long and breathe really deep into those abdominal muscles. You should feel a nice sensation in the rib cage. Once you have taken your arms and legs long there, we'll do just a few roll-ups. The way a roll-up works, I'll do the first one traditional and the second one I'll modify. I'm going to inhale up. Take my shoulder blades off the mat and then I'm going to exhale through, trying to roll up one vertebrae at a time. Feet have to stay on the ground. So if your feet came up, this next one is for you. Inhale here, exhale, peel down. Everybody comes down one vertebrae at a time and re-oxygenating every one of those vertebrae, every one of those discs in between my vertebrae. So if the legs came up, bend them up towards your hips just like they were before, only this time heels, toes, and knees are going to squeeze together. You're going to inhale up. Hands come behind your legs and then use your legs to counterbalance you up. And if that didn't work for you, we'll do one more, one more modification. Inhale, exhale, peel down one vertebrae at a time. 
and arms come up overhead. So now this is the last modification for those of you who that still was not working. It's just going to be an inhale up, grab behind those legs, really try to round your back and then peel yourself back down one vertebrae at a time. Whichever one of those worked for you, we're all going to meet in the up position. So however you get there, inhale, if it's a full roll up, that's excellent. Exhale through. If that didn't work for you, that's fine also. So now the abdominal should be nice and corseted. You should be feeling a little bit out of breath, potentially, hopefully, and a little warmer. We're just going to cross those legs underneath us and come into what's quadruped. Quadruped is hands underneath my shoulders, knees underneath my hips. If you have a hard time on your knees here, we're going to go right up into a plank position in a moment. There's all kinds of different modifications for a plank. So I'm going to cue it through the first time as a traditional plank, but for those of you who need a modification, that's coming next. In a traditional plank, I'm going to take my thumb and my first finger and push them hard into the floor. I'm going to take my elbows to face my knees. I'm going to rotate them towards my knees. I'm going to activate my abdominals. I'm going to take one leg behind me and then the other to match, and that is a traditional plank. If this is not for you because you've had a wrist injury or because it just doesn't feel good right now today, you're going to bend those legs down, take your elbows to the floor, hands clasped together, activate the abdominals, and take one leg behind you and the other to match. This is an acceptable modification. The last modification, and if you're still holding in plank, you're probably enjoying yourself. The last modification, hands are up underneath you, shoulder blades in their back pockets, and you're just going to practice one leg behind you and take it back in and then practice the other leg behind you. Once we get into that plank position though, you should feel your abdominals, your triceps, your back, your lats, your low abs, just about everything in your body is, is working in a plank position. Once you've warmed up your abdominals and your back, this is an excellent place for you to be. Go ahead and take those legs down, sit yourself back into a rest position or a child's pose. Take those hands way forward and stretch yourself out. The last thing we're going to do today is we're going to do a little side lying series, which is all about the glutes and the hips. So when you are ready, if you'd like to do one push up to the floor, I tell everybody this is a great way to learn how to do push ups because you don't have to get back up. So you're going to take one leg behind you if you can, the other to match, and it's just one push up to the floor. The elbows are going to really scrape the sides of your body. And if you don't have to get back up, it's not so bad to get down. Once we get here, we're going to roll into what I call banana shape. I'm going to go sideways on my mat. You're going to take your heels and your toes together, and we're going to take our hips back, and I'm in a banana shape here. So I'm not all the way stacked, and the reason I'm in a banana shape is that that's what's protecting my low back. I'm going to take these legs up so that they're just exactly hip off the floor. So if I'm going to roll onto my back, I would now be at tabletop position. My head is going to rest on my arm either with my arm bent, with a pillow underneath, or with my head on my uh, arm itself. Propping your head up like this in Pilates, we don't generally do because it takes the neck out of alignment. So you want to try to find the proper position with that head. Once you have your legs up here at the tabletop position or the 90 degrees, you're going to extend your top leg just straight. We're just going to do a few little things here. The two things you're going to remember, number one, the abdominals are drawn in the whole time as if someone's going to punch you in the belly. And number two, I'm going to try to keep my femur, my quad, my thigh, whatever makes sense to you, facing the ceiling. So I'm going to take that knee and rotate it up. Once I have this position now, I'm going to draw little tiny circles with my heel. I'm going to go towards you first, so you come towards me. Little tiny circles, 10 of them, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one, now I'm going to go the other direction. Ten of them. Nine, eight. Remember that you're taking that knee up the entire time. Five, four, three, two, and one. Now the great thing is about these circles, I can do them anywhere I want. The more they come up towards my nose, the harder they are. The bigger I make them, the harder it is to control with my abdominals. So I'm going to take this next step up here at about 45 degrees. I'm not all the way up here by my nose. My knees is still up towards the ceiling. I'm going to take those circles towards my nose again this way. Maybe make them a little bigger this time. We'll just do eight of them. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, other direction, I'm trying to make them circular. I'm just doing eight of them, seven, so you know what you have ahead of you. Six, five, four, three, two, and one. So we're now we're going to do one more set. This set's probably going to be the hardest of all of them. We're going to point our toes. We're going to bring that leg up towards our nose. We're going to draw little tiny circles. We'll just do six this time. Six towards your nose. Six, five, four, three, 
two, six the other direction, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll notice just holding your leg here is a whole lot of work. If you can really extend it to straight, you'll feel the whole back side of that leg, the hamstring, and the external rotator of the glute. That's what we're working. Go ahead and cross that leg over top. I always tell you to pat it out first. And then take a sit up. The bottom leg is bent. The top leg is going to come over. And we're going to give that hip a good, healthy stretch. If this does not work for you because you can't bend this knee in, take that leg to straight and really take this leg back on top and give it a good hug. And then because we did one side, we have to do the other. So you're just going to flip yourself over. Remember, we're going to start in that banana shape just like we did before. I'm going to make sure that my heels, my toes, and my hips are stacked. Make sure I'm in that banana shape, and then take those legs up to a tabletop or 90 degree. This top leg is going to extend to straight just like it did last time, and then I'm going to externally rotate it and try to get in those abs, like someone's giving me a punch or a tickle. Flex your foot first. We did 10 circles towards me first. 10, 9, remember where that femur is pointing, so the knee is up. Five more, four, three, two, and one. Other direction, 10, 9, eight, seven, six. What you're hoping for here is that you're feeling a little bit on both hips. Three, two, and one. Take that leg forward. Even the bottom hip should be working just a little bit. Now I'm doing eight towards my nose first. Eight. These are a little bigger. Seven, six. Remember, a little bigger means more abdominal muscles. Really draw those abs in. Four, three, two. Last one, other direction. Eight, remember where your head is. Try not to look around. Six, five, four, three, two. Last one, now I'm gonna point that toe. I'm gonna take it all the way up here towards my nose. And I'm gonna draw those little tiny ones, six of them. Six, five, four, three, two, and one. Other direction, six, five, four, three, two and one hold it there if you can feel what that feels like in the glute and then take it over top give it a good healthy smack to reoxygenate that glute come on up bottom leg is bent top leg comes over remember you can extend this bottom leg we're just giving that glute a good stretch so as a reminder everything we've done here today we've done just with a mat and our body and we've worked out pretty much a lot of our body the abdominals the glutes the lats and the triceps so I'm asked often, what is the difference between yoga and Pilates? And Pilates is the corseting of your spine with your abdominal muscles. Yoga is more about stretching your muscles, although you do use your core a lot in yoga. So they're a little bit different in where they were derived and where you're going with them. Um, Pilates, I say, when I try to explain it to people, is what I do every day so I can do everything else. Pilates is about trying to start every action, whether you're working out or walking or at the grocery store or picking up your kids or reaching behind your car seat from your core so that your spine is always corseted. You are working your extremities, but you're starting everything at the core. And studies have shown that, um, for instance, professional athletes tend to start every one of their movements in their internal obliques, that they actually start everything from down with these low abs. And that gives you more power. It corsets your spine, keeping your low back healthy. It keeps your hips and your knees where they belong in your body. And you tend to burn more calories because you're starting at kind of a heat source. So it raises your metabolism. Yoga, on the other hand, it depends because there's so many different types of yoga, it's really difficult to kind of take it all into one big umbrella. But if we were going to compare Pilates to anything, I would probably compare it to more of a vinyasa yoga, which is a lot of movement. There's some um, prone work in a vinyasa yoga, just like there is in Pilates, where there's um, maybe a plank position on your wrist and um, in your back and on your shoulders. And in a vinyasa yoga, you're also definitely using your core, but it is not the beginning of every single one of your movements. Um, and that's pretty much the difference. We, we work our Pilates muscles extended and strong. And in yoga, you are um, stretching your muscles long.
All right, thank you, JJ. That was a great Pilates workout. Now, I'm back here with Ruben. We're going to talk a little bit of cardio. And for people that are beginners, first time you've ever worked out, people come into a gym sometimes and they get a little overwhelmed at the cardio equipment. Absolutely. So where do you suggest that we start out? I know that you're on a right. just a basic stationary bike. Yes. And this is one with a lot of support that you can just kind of sit in and start your, your cardio. Yes. Okay. I'm actually uh, getting a pretty good workout right you now. You are, absolutely. <laughs> We're working them out today, too, here, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. So the best thing about this bike is that, you know, if you have any issues with your back or if you're just not strong enough in your lower body, okay. you can get a really good workout. It's got a really support, a really good support on your back here. Okay. And you're working out the most important muscle, which is the heart. With the heart, absolutely. So that's really what we're trying to aim for here. Okay. Um, and you really just start off at the intensity that you're most comfortable with. If you okay. can only do one minute, then you just start do one there minute. Start there and just keep going. And you can do increments of 30 seconds a week if you can. Whatever you can, just don't feel intimidated. What you want to aim for is at least 10 minutes to get a really effective cardiovascular exercise. Now, I know we're going down the line just a little bit here, but what's the most you would suggest that somebody does a bike? Well, I mean, uh, you can go up to an hour, wow, okay. but really any more than that is a bit too much. It's uh, it really just depends on what you're trying to accomplish. But to get an effective cardiovascular exercise, around 30 minutes to 45 minutes is, is about fun. right. Okay, but just start off wherever you can. Now, we're going to also talk about maybe a piece of cardio equipment to do. Right. So what are you going to suggest for us next? Well, we're going to go with the bike that has a little bit less stability than this one. On your All right, okay, let's, so. let's go check it out. Excellent. All right. Okay, now Ruben, we're at a different bike here, and I notice there's not as much, there's no back support on this bike. Right. Now let's talk about fat burning because everybody wants to, they, they want to burn fat, they want to lose weight when they're working out. Absolutely. So let's talk about that. Well, pretty much, um, we used to think that the harder you go, the more calories you're burning, which okay. is so, but actually the more fat calories you want to burn, you want to go at about 65% your heart rate intensity. Okay. And uh, the way to find that out is basically just to, um, we have a little zone training uh, thing here that will tell you your age, and then it will tell you kind of an average. So okay. if you're 30 years old, you want to go for about 123 beats per minute. So you can't really lie about your age when you're on the bike, right? No, no you not, not a good idea to do that. <laughs> you definitely okay. <should>. Yeah. <laughs> That will do it for today's show and a very big congratulations to you if this is your first time ever working out you're already on your way to a healthier you in the new year a big thank you to JJ and to Ruben for giving you a great workout today and if you'd like to find out more information on Equinox Fitness you can go down there they'll help you out and get you ready for the new year and keep watching our show too until next time I'm Maria Soreo